I always wanted to do career day because it's, you know, you see like the firefighter and there was a sheriff actually there. And, you know, it's very, this is like typical uniform type of, of careers that you see at career day. And so when I got the invite, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting because what I do is quite different. <laughs> this is the age when they're kind of seeing the models and the possibilities. So it's truly, really incredible for me to be able to go. And I literally told them, I asked the question also, who gets in trouble for talking too much? And lots of hands were raised. And then I said, well, guess what? I get paid for talking now. <laughs> it was really cool to see how intuitive and how inquisitive and curious these teenagers are. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is PAM, the Café con PAM, the bilingual podcast that features Latine and people of the global majority who break barriers, change lives, and make the world a better place. Welcome to episode 352 of Café con PAM. Today, we have a very special episode with me, bueno, el burro al último, with the students of Hilltop Middle School my friend, Mrs. Jarrett, Aida Barraza Jarrett, who invited me. She is the teacher who brought me in to do career day. And we're going to take you through the experience as it kind of happened. So I'm really excited for us to dive in. But before, I want to say a big thank you to our friends from No Mono. No Mono is because it's stereo, not mono. and. It's the incredible sound capsule that allows me to literally podcast on the go. This is the most reliable thing than anything else. I have used so much equipment, been doing this for eight years. And Nomono is the item that I can literally bring with me. I know it will never fail me. It will stay recorded. The quality of the audio is incredible, and I am so grateful I came across them, and we are doing this together. So thank you to our friends from Nomono. This episode wouldn't have happened literally without our Nomono capsule. We're going to dive into the introduction that Mrs. Jarrett gave me. It's kind of funny for me to sell her. say Mrs. Jarrett, porque para mí es Aida, pero, you know, teacher. So... It was really cool to receive an introduction from someone who I admire and I care deeply about because she is one of those people that when I didn't believe in myself so much, she did. And the fact that she still thinks of me when it comes to sharing my story with the youth was really awesome. So... Here's the introduction to career day. I'm going to give you some pointers. Uh, Ms. Covarrubias will be talking about different jobs that she's had throughout her long life. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, throughout her life. And then at the end, she's going to have you um, guess the order of them. So since there are so many careers that are mentioned, you probably want to write down all of those careers and then you can maybe bring it back. Okay? So um, Pam Covarrubia uh, is a very good friend of mine. We've known each other for many, many years. Um, and uh, she's the kind of friend where if you, time has passed, time and like a lot of history has passed and we haven't seen each other in many years, we still find a way to connect with each other. I could spend the day with her and feel like t no time has passed. Um, she's a very interesting person. When we were thinking about this career day, she's the first person I thought about. So um, we're going to be grateful for her time here. We're going to ask lots of good questions. Um, and then be good uh, listeners as well and make sure you um, take in the, the information that she's giving you. So let's go ahead and thank um, Ms. Pan Covarrubias for being here today. Let's give her a round of applause. Good morning. <laughs> so, I am Pam Covarrubias. Thank you for the introduction. It was super fun. So, I'm curious. What do you think when somebody says career? 
What are you going to do for your career? What comes up? Like a long-term job. Like a long-term job, yeah. Guess what? I've had many careers. So I asked this question because I wanted to hear the thoughts of students. Now, to preserve privacy of students and, frankly, to avoid a lot of, like, wouldn't sign waivers or anything. So I don't, won't show a lot of, like, voices of the students, ad- identifiable voices, just because they're minors and there's a lot of intricacies without it. So I'll just narrate, basically, what happened. So... I posed the question, what do you think career is? And something that kind of made me a little sad was that some students said it's a job. It's the thing that you do to make money. There were a few of them, however, that were like, it's what you do to make money. And then my follow-up question to them was, well, do you have fun Some students said no, and other students said you could have fun. And so then we went into a deeper kind of conversation of, well, have you thought about what you want to be? This is seventh, eighth grade. It was a mix of both seventh and eighth grade. And, you know, they haven't thought about it, but this is kind of like some have actually. And this is the age when they're kind of seeing the models and the possibilities. So it's truly, really incredible for me to be able to go. And I literally told them, I asked the question also, who gets in trouble for talking too much? And lots of hands were raised. And then I said, well, guess what? I get paid for talking now. <laughs> so that was really fun to see the reactions of like, whoa. <laughs> so you will hear me ask them. Who gets in trouble now for talking? And this is where I go in and share the many, many things that I've ever done. And there were some that I didn't include that I didn't find relevant enough. But (laughs) so many of the various careers, I share them with them. And with each one, I could see their faces like, oh, you could do that. Especially the culture manager role. That was quite interesting, so check it out. When I was going into college, I almost went to film school. Finally, I made it to college, and I almost switched to psychology, so I almost became a psychiatrist because I really was curious about how the brain works. So I was an artist assistant, which meant that I was stretching her canvases, I was framing things, I was making sure that her studio was in check, I was doing all kinds of things, and It was really fun to see someone doing art and make a living off of it. I've been a podcaster, which allows me to ask questions to people for a living. Who gets in trouble for talking too much? Well, me too. I used to get in trouble for talking too much, and podcasting has allowed me to stay talking and get paid for it. I also worked at a swap meet, and I sold clothes. I could have been a bank teller, but I moved. So I had the job and then my mom moved me to Mexico City and then I didn't get it. I've also been a life coach, which, (laughs) so life coaching is kind of like a counselor. So I ask people their their problems and we figure them out together. I was also an operations manager. I've been a graphic designer. I've always been a photographer. I used to take pictures of families and just kind of like create memories with them. I've also been a bill collector. This is where my Spanish helped, because a lot of times people didn't speak English, and so I had to talk to them in Espanol. I was also a culture manager. What do you think that means? From what I read, it's a, so you can keep everyone engaged. So you can keep everyone, yeah? I used to plan company fun days. So once I explained about the various things that I have done the game that we played was to figure out which one came first and they had to ask me questions so did you do this before this did you do that before that or you know and sometimes they just guessed it and it was really cool to see how intuitive and how inquisitive and curious these teenagers are and after that somehow in one I did four classes one of the classes, my ADHD came up and 
there, there was one student who raised their hand and they said, oh, I have ADHD too. And I was able to share that how I have learned to work with my ADHD. Check it out. That's how it works. And so after that, I have used so many different tools. One of them is tapping that we haven't talked about. And that allows my nervous system to calm down because also my amygdala, when you have ADHD, your amygdala is constantly a part of your brain that's constantly scanning for danger. It's always scanning for danger. And so in my case, I realized that the first step that I had to do was calm down, slow down, and then create a plan. And sometimes I create false de deadlines. So if something is due today at nine, I tell myself that it's due yesterday at 10. So I can make it happen faster. And now, as an adult, I realize that ADHD is actually a superpower. So one question came up of what is a typical work day for you? And that one is kind of a hard question for me to answer because I don't have a typical day, as you will hear me explain. Because the way that I've organized my week is actually by days. So in my case, I have Mondays dedicated to admin work. So I call it Money Mondays. For the monies that are listening, you know we've talked about Money Mondays. And Mondays, from the energy of the day, it's very much inviting to kind of like do easier-ish type of tasks because it's the beginning. You're coming in from the the winter of the of the weekend or from like the the rest time of the winter of the of the weekend and you know to go straight into super intense work on Mondays. That's why Mondays are hard for people. So we want to or that's why my Mondays are supposed to be easy by design. Tuesdays, Wednesdays and a little bit of Thursdays, but Tuesdays and Wednesdays are for client work. Thursday, Thursdays are office hours and podcast recording. And then Fridays are the other easy day because we're moving into the weekend. And so in my case, I have designed my day, my weeks by bucketing the days. And so I don't go into this depth when I explain it to to the class, but I wanted to tell you a little bit more and give you some context as to why I don't have a typical day. But here comes the, the, the question. <laughs> I don't have a typical work day because every day is different for me. So for I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one calls with clients. I get on Zoom all the time. I do podcast interviews with people. You like being a podcaster? I love being a podcaster. I'm recording one now, actually. Hi, podcast. <laughs> and I also get to write a lot, send emails, create content, record, and go out and meet people too. Then the conversation came to about how does your work help the community? <laughs> and so here's my answer. This profession helps the community, I think, by sharing the stories of people that look like me, that sound like me, from our voices. So many times we have found different places and spaces where history is told and it's told from one perspective. And so I think that my work allows people to share their story from their own perspective. Then they asked me about failure. And I thought that was really fascinating for seventh and eighth graders to ask about failure and the fact that they're already thinking about that. And talking to their teacher, Mrs. Jarrett, she shared that they've been talking about growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And I'm like, look at you doing some coaching frameworks. I love it. And so maybe this is where the conversation around failing comes in. And you'll hear my answer that I give them. And as I reflect on failure, so what I tell the kids is, you know, it's inevitable. But uh, it's also perspective. Porque muchas veces we could say that things failed. But en realidad, 
did they? Or was that just the way that it was supposed to happen because we only had the skills that got us to that point? And that point allowed us to then learn new skills and then move on to the next thing. And so I think failure is something that perfectionism has created this fear around failing. One of Cayeta culture's principles is to avoid the failure or to glorify perfectionism. And so failure also, it's really, it, le- it pushes into questioning if what we're doing is right. And what I will say is, you know, you've never failed. You've only stumbled. Because failing, I think, means you quit. And even if you quit, hey, you learned when it was time to stop something. So failing is something inevitable. We're always going to make mistakes. We're not machines. We're not robots. And so I continue to fail all the time. What's important is to not stay. It's like almost when you trip, you don't want to stay in the hole. You want to come out of the hole and look back and say, what happened? What could I have done better? How could I learn from this and make better choices next time? And sometimes you can't really control that. And so it really is about the attitude that you're going to take for the next step. These students are so creative with their questions and so curious, which I really enjoyed. And I really love that they gave themselves permission to ask questions that for some might have potentially felt uncomfortable. Someone asked about my skills and making money. And I wanted to make sure that they understood that you could have a job. It could be your career. You could have a job that makes money and then you could do things that make you have lots of fun. And sometimes you could create something that is both. Something that you have fun with and something that makes you money. At the same time, we can't always do that. And so in my beginning, the beginning of my journey, the podcast didn't pay. I wasn't getting paid for talking (laughs) yet. And so I had to use other skills to make money. And this is where I shared how I've learned to leverage the other skills. And this comes probably from my immigrant background of when people say, you know, no, no tengas miedo al trabajo. Like, you don't be afraid of working because if you're afraid of working, then you'll never make money or whatever that goes. Like, that's probably a belief. Pero I think I have learned to leverage the skills that I got. And sometimes the skills is just having two arms, which is such a privilege. And I share how I came across an opportunity to do work that virtually, it was physical work. It was, it was actually physical work. And this woman, though, who gave me a chance, if it wouldn't have been for this role, many days, I wouldn't have had money to eat food. This is where I could say that my hands supported me. The skills that I have to, I mean, I went to, also I went to art school. So I, in, in woodworking class in college, I learned how to create my canvases and how to stretch a canvas and how to make sure that, you know, things that you do when you paint. And I was able to use those skills to make some money at the moment. And I think the way that the students took it, it almost from the expressions that I got was like they saw that there are possibilities, that you don't have to limit yourself to one thing because we have multiple skills that we can always bring in depending on what it is that the need is. And this is what here's here's my answer that I gave them. One of the things that I've realized is that I have skills and when I was an artist assistant, for example, I had just quit my corporate job. So I didn't have, I didn't have any income and I was podcasting 
and I could do things. And so I met this woman who was an artist and she was like, well, I can, I need an assistant. And I'm like, I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do. And it was literally sitting on the floor and stretching canvases and putting them around like frames and cleaning the studio. And so I've never felt like I can't find a way to make money because I am able body that allows me to do things. And I also have my brain that gives me skills to make things happen. Then they asked me about struggling and what happens when you struggle with podcasting in my case, because I came in as a podcaster. And to me, I think it's important to be transparent and clear. And I think presenting context and the reality of the truth <laughs> is can also support them as they go in their journey, especially because these are young adults, you know, I mean, they're teenagers who are still going in the journey. They haven't probably, I mean, they're in middle school, so they're still figuring out who they are. They're still figuring out, figuring out what they want to do. And so I wanted to make sure that I didn't present this picture of like incredible things only. And so I was really strategic at sharing that I still struggle, which I do. Like that, that, that's a fact. Every day. Yeah, all the time. So still to this day, I have struggles. So the struggle is not like once you do what you love doing, it's not like the struggle ends. It's just that I think I've built enough resilience to keep going because I tried quitting many times actually. So I have done over 350 episodes and now there's no way to stop it. But when I had 20, I was like, ugh, this is much easier to quit. <laughs> but then people wouldn't let me. What's the average podcast episode like for all the podcasts that exist? How many episodes do you think people on average release? I have 350. I've been doing this for eight years. So 90% of podcasts that are born, they stop at episode what? 10. Yep. Did I actually guess that? Yeah. <laughs> so 90% of podcasters that begin podcasting don't go past episode 10. But it's wild because there's so many, like, dead podcast that they just couldn't keep going. So anyone want to start a podcast? And I shared a fact about podcasting because every time I meet someone and they learn that I do podcasts and they learn that I've been doing this for, for a while now, I always get the, oh, I want to start a podcast. And I support that 100%. That's the first step. You want to start it, you have you have the desire to doing it. But then the next steps to actually make it happen, figure out why do you want to do it and who is it for? Who is going to listen to you? Can you come up with at least 25 episodes that you can create? Uno, get the idea. Dos, figure out why this is important to you. Tres, find out who will listen to you. Do you have enough people interested in this topic? Cuatro, plan out 25 episodes. Porque you'll hear this statistic. And frankly, this is something that has been said for a long time. So I don't know as of 2024, which is the year that I'm recording this. It might be different. So don't at me if it's a different number at this point. But that's what I learned it was. Entonces, if we can't come up with the 25 plus episodes, it might be time to go back to, to step number one, which is what is the idea about? Y número cinco is commit to doing it. Figure out the time you have available. What is your capacity to creating this? Yo, para grabar este episodio, por ejemplo, I've been sitting here for 30 minutes just listening back to the recordings and then recording the commentary around it. 
Nancy, producer Nancy, spent way longer than that cutting the clips from four hours of recordings. Maru, who's also on my team, spends lots of time creating images. And both of them, they do a lot behind the scenes. And so one episode, this is probably going to be a 30-minute episode, maybe, give or take, maybe more. But for one episode, the behind the scenes, I would say, and actually this is good homework for me. I'm going to ask the team to like time it out, like actually figure out the time. How, how many hours does it take to produce one episode? It's minimum 10 hours at a minimum. And so, yes, everyone can start a podcast. I'm not here to gatekeep it. I mean, I'll give you all the things. What's important is for you to figure out your capacity. And if you're like, well, if one episode takes 10 hours, and this is with a team, y'all. At some point, I was doing all the things. And literally, one episode, one hour episode, it would take me eight hours just to edit it because I'm so bad at it. <laughs> this is why I hire people with better skills than me. I will be the first to tell you, you can absolutely do it. And... What's your capacity? And if you say, well, if it takes 10 hours to produce one episode, then maybe you do one episode a month. But don't commit to something you can't commit to. And so I'll get off my soapbox and let you listen to what I answered. So everything, the reason why I shared all the things that I've done is because every single one of those jobs helped me get to where I am today. And so my recommendation is don't discount the experiences that you're living because every single thing that you experience will get you to a place next time. What would you say to these kids who say, I have no idea? I would say really think about what makes you have a lot of fun. What's an activity that you do that you don't realize time has passed? I used to love to draw. I used to get lost drawing. So I went to school for graphic design. And I, I still do, I still do it all the time. Like the sticker that whoever got the Tumblr, you're gonna sticker with the, that I drew. So I still do that. I still choose to do the things that I have fun with. So think about the things that make you have fun and always remember that. Okay, listeners, that was my episode on career day. I hope it gave you a little bit of a feel of what it was like to be there. I mean, for me, I... What I need to work on is my projection and breathing more so I don't sound so winded. But I really like my hope for releasing this episode is, I mean, one, to give you that experience because it was it was pretty cool to me. I always wanted to do career day because it's, you know, you see like the firefighter and there was a sheriff actually there. And, you know, it's very this is like typical uniform type of of careers that you see at career day. And so when I got the invite, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting because what I do is quite different. And so I wanted to give you kind of like a little snippet of, of what it was like. And I hope you enjoyed it. Pues thank you so, so much for being here. If this is your first time, welcome to Cafe Con Pam. This is not a typical episode. So I invite you to go back into the catalog and Find another episode you can tune into. Let me know what you think. I hope you stay. Don't forget to subscribe if you are on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit, hit the bell so you are notified when a new episode drops. If you are on podcasting platforms, hit the subscribe and the follow. Make sure that that happens because I know you may think that you will remember, but you won't. And it also helps a lot with the credibility and the downloads because sponsors look for that. If you feel called to leaving a review, it's a great and easy way to support the show. Great and easy way. All you have to do is go to your podcasting platform, drop your review, tell me what you think about it. Tell, Think about describing the, the podcast to your best friend. How would you introduce someone to Cafe Con Pam. It helps a ton. I'm so grateful every time you see I see your reviews and I still appreciate you taking the time. If you're on YouTube, you can just drop your comments. You're I know you do that all the time. And so it's really fun though to see you 
participate and connect because that also shows me that somebody's listening on the other side. Y bueno, let's stay connected. I would love to stay connected at Cafe Con Pan Podcast on Instagram and Facebook and all the things social. I use the same handles for everything. So just search for Cafe Con Pan Podcast. You can check out our website, cafecompam.com, cafecompam.com forward slash monies, where you can learn more about my group coaching program. It's more, I don't know if I want to call it a group coaching program because it ain't. So I don't know. Monies, help me figure this out. <laughs> because it's not necessarily a group coaching program. It's a place to get unstuck, a place to find clarity, a place to be seen, to be heard, to be supported. And it's a co-creation. It truly is. The monies that are in the ecosystem, it's amazing because they know each other and they see and meet each other like elsewhere. And then I get jealous about it. So it's a beautiful place. Cavacompam.com for slash monies. And listeners, thank you so, so much for being here today. If you are still here, here's my quick little update. I have been in this space for a decade. I've lived in this location for over 10 years before I even started Cafe Con Pam, which is wild to think, and I'm soon moving. And so I don't think, I was looking at the calendar, I don't think this is the last recording I do in this space. I hope not. <laughs> But... Thank you for being on this ride. So soon you will see a new office in a different location. I'm going to try to get my desk, my office set up and near a window, which I have in the new place where we're moving. We're still, we're staying in San Diego. If you know about my story, if, you, if you've been here for a while, David is moving to San Diego. Yay. And so I'll give you more updates very soon. But we have signed all the things. We have the house. Everything is officially official. And so for me, even for me, feels nostalgic to see my background. And I'm probably going to have to take a picture to see if I can set it up the same. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's a new chapter. So I thank you for coming along on this, this whole time. So grateful you're still here. Y bueno, listeners, como siempre. Stay shining. Sabrosura pa' ti que qué.